Welcome to another Crosspoint Southern Baptist Church weekly Bible study. I'm your host, Jim Hillier. I'm glad that you uh, are, are joining us today, whether you're a first-time visitor or, uh, or a, repeat, uh, a follower. It's, uh, it's always so glad to have you here. Um, besides this uh, weekly Bible study, Crosspoint also live streams our uh, Sunday morning services every Sunday at 1045 a.m. Uh, we hope you'll join us for that as well. Uh, we have returned to uh, uh, in-person uh, worship services and uh, Wednesday night uh, Wednesday night Bible studies, and of course our, our Sunday morning uh, Sunday school class. Uh, so if you're if you're in the, uh, the Wood River, South Roxana, uh, Edwardsville area of Southern Illinois. Uh, we are located on Wanda Road in uh, in Edwardsville, so we would hope you would uh, you would come join us. We are uh, we are doing social distancing, uh, and we ask that all uh, all folks that that come into the building be wearing a mask and keep that mask in place so long as you're up uh, moving around, fellowshipping. Uh, and when you sit down, uh, with, you know during the uh, the Sunday school, we we have our fellowship hall set up with tables. When you sit down with your family group, you can go ahead and, and re remove the mask. Uh, when you, as you move to the uh, sanctuary, we ask that you would put that back on. And, uh, and then once you sit down in the sanctuary with your family, uh, you can go ahead and remove it. Uh, again, putting it back on when you get up at the end of the service to, to exit. Uh, so, you know, it's just uh, uh, being exceptionally cautious, uh, even though uh, the numbers in the area, uh, are indicating that we uh, that the, the were things are getting better. Uh, we we want to keep things going that way. Uh, if you're interested in getting a copy of the material that we use, uh, both in our uh, uh, Sunday school class and 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 here on, in our uh, uh, online uh, edition, it's uh, the book uh, comes out every quarter. Uh, comes out in, in a small magazine format called Explore the Bible. Uh, it's published by a company called Lifeway. You can find it at www.lifeway.com, Explore the Bible. And again, it, uh, it comes in a small magazine format. Uh, you can order the hard copy online. Uh, you, can, uh, you can also get this as a downloadable PDF, uh, so you can... You can uh, put it on your on your tablet, on your phone, on your cloud drive, wherever you want to, uh, wherever you want to park it, so that you can uh, you can actually uh, have it have it with you uh, wherever you go. One of the uh, one of the things I dearly love about it is while uh, while during going through the the, the book, uh, it's a thirteen week study of uh, a book or books of the Bible. Uh, usually it, it's one, uh, once in a while we, we do two if they're, if they're short books. Um, but, uh, during the 13 weeks in order to get through some of the books, you know, they, there are some, uh, there are some sections of the book that are skipped, uh, in the weekly study. However, in the front, there is a daily reading list, uh, really, really handy. Uh, it, it will literally during the uh, during the the course of the thirteen weeks, you will read all of the verses uh, that that are in the book that's being covered. I like to keep it handy along with uh, a notebook and and my Bible, and uh, I read uh, read the the verse for the day, and uh, uh, make notes in in uh, in a journal as far as uh, what kind of uh, you know, did, did it speak to me in a certain way? Was there a certain, uh, uh, you know, did, did it highlight something that was going on in society? Just, just overall, uh, how, did, uh, how did the verse speak? So again, uh, it's, a, it's a great thing to have. Uh, if, you, uh, if you attend uh, our, uh, our in-person Sunday school class, we do, have, uh, we do have a number of copies of this available. Uh, so uh, you know, there those are those are there as well. But this week we are starting the second half of the book of Luke. Uh, we've been uh, we we've actually been uh, been studying Luke now for the last thirteen weeks, and uh, we are 
you know, at the, uh, the, the first part we did uh, uh, up to um, up to chapter 10, and uh, now we're starting on uh, uh, looking at uh, chapters 10 through 24. The uh, we, as we've been talking about the book of Luke is is very detailed, uh, very uh, uh, very flow oriented, very uh, uh, you know down to the the the, 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 the details. As uh, as we've talked before, Luke was a he was a physician. He was very well educated. He was very uh, very detail oriented, very technical. So uh, it it takes on that. Uh, that that kind of a uh, uh, of a sense of the uh, of the word, um, but again, this week we are we are starting this what's called the spring twenty twenty one uh, series, looking at Luke ten through uh, through twenty four, and this will be session one. Uh, we're going to be looking at Luke chapter ten verses twenty five. Through 37. So, if you would join me in a word of prayer and we will get started. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. We thank you for the blessing of being able to get together to share your word virtually. We also thank you for, uh, the, for the blessings uh, that, that you've bestowed upon us of being able to, uh, uh, to, to be getting together uh, in person and uh, uh, fellowshipping together and, uh, and and having our our, uh, our churches open uh, for people to to come in, uh, Father, we just pray that you would bless that and you would keep us safe as we uh, as as we're reopen. Father, be with us now as we study your word, uh, as we start our uh, second uh, uh, second thirteen weeks in the book of Luke from the New Testament. Father, be with us now. And bless the bless the word as it goes out, and bless those who hear. For it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. So this week, as I said, we're going to be looking at um, uh, starting off uh, session one in the spring 2021 uh, book, looking at Luke chapter 10 verses 25 through 37, and we're going to be looking at the concept of neighbors uh, there there's there's so much more to it than just the than, than just the idea uh, but uh, then there's uh, we're, we're going to first uh, look at an exchange that Jesus has uh, with uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the one of the Jewish uh, legal experts and uh, uh, that we're going to that we're going to look at a parable uh, how Jesus responds to uh, that exchange, and then uh, closing out, we'll we'll look at we'll look at a challenge for uh, for not only for that that legal expert, but as well for for Christians in our current day and time. <coughs> Sorry. So as we move into uh, into our scripture this week. Looking first at uh, uh, verses uh, 25 through 29 of Luke chapter 10, uh, you know Jesus has has been uh, uh, he's been teaching and and he's been uh, uh, been traveling, uh, been doing miracles and and uh, uh, as as he was traveling, uh, occasionally different of the uh, the Pharisees and the scribes would uh, would approach him. And, and challenge him with uh, basically looking for ways, as we've seen several times already from, uh, uh, from, from the very beginning of the book of Luke. Every time he would get around them, they would be challenging him and, and looking for ways that they could use him. <clears throat> it's, it's one of the most uh, difficult demands uh, of, of Jesus is, is to love our enemies, and so uh, you know, when when you consider uh, loving your enemies, that you know, that that's that's a tough one. But loving your neighbors, loving somebody that they're they're not they're not your friend, you're not they're not your enemy. They're they're just 
someone, your neighbor. Um, so uh, it, it, it's really uh, uh, loving your neighbor may actually seem a little bit more plausible because, after all, if, if the person is your enemy, it, you've got a lot of you got a lot to overcome. But at the same time, you know, loving someone that, that you don't even know um, is, is a, a, a severe challenge. But to us, you know, a lot of times we, we look at, at, at that love as uh, social politeness. Like, well, you know, I've, I've, actually, I've actually heard it, uh, heard it uh, spouted that, uh, uh, that, that loving your neighbor is, is just being nice to people. Like, no. No, it's, it's, it's a lot more than that. You know, it's a lot more than, um, uh, than, than, than holding, uh, holding the door at a, at a, at a restaurant uh, for, uh, for, for, for uh, a family or uh, uh, nodding to someone. Or, you know, if, you're, uh, if you live, in, if you live uh, in, a, in a rural area like, uh, like, like we do or out in the country, you know, it's, uh, it's a very normal thing to be driving down uh, driving down the road in the pickup and and you see the truck coming coming the other way and you just kind of you know give them the uh, give them the little tip of the hand and uh and they do the same back to you you know it's just, you know, you're just just kind of waving him i don't know who the guy is <laughs> he could be, a, could be an axe murderer for all you know uh but you know when you live out in the country you know, it, it uh <laughs> that is kind of a normal behavior uh not not being an axe murderer being you know the, the little way that's that's the normal behavior. Um, but Jesus is commanding us to love our neighbor, uh, you know, way beyond social norms. And uh, the type of love that Jesus is talking about here uh, is, is, is uh, sacrificial. Uh, it's a willingness to treat others uh, the, um, the way that, uh, that, that we treat ourselves now. You know, and we've talked about that recently, that you know, the love your neighbor as yourself. Well, that, I know a lot of people that don't don't think much of themselves. Uh, so if they're loving their neighbor the way that they love their the, themselves, I feel sorry for their neighbor. <laughs> but but it's true. I mean, uh, some of you may be able to, uh, uh, to to relate to that that kind of that kind of sensation of well, you know, I, I'm not much of a fan of myself. So should I really lo- love my neighbor or treat my neighbor? Uh, the way that, that, that I would love uh, on or treat myself. So the Christian mandate of, of love is, is that, that sacrificial love, that's that, that putting, them, uh, putting them ahead of ourselves regardless of, um, regardless of, of how we may, how we may uh, be tempted to feel or who they may be, uh, as we're going to see here shortly uh, when, Jesus, uh, uh, when, when, when Jesus challenges uh, this, uh, this lawyer. Um, we're, uh, we're, we're going to be challenged to look at it from a perspective of, of people who, based on our heritage and theirs, we may be uh, rather by default um, opposed to or adverse to. So anyway, let's, let, let's go ahead and, and take a look here at, at what's going on. Uh, this is an expert in the law stood up to test him, saying, teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is, what is written in the law? He asked him. It's Jesus asking, asking the, the, the lawgiver. Is what, what is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. You've answered correctly, Jesus told him. Do this, and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Now there, there's a lot going on right here, uh, so so let's kind of let's kind of dig into it. Uh, first of all, this expert in the law, he's uh, uh, he's Jewish, uh, he's probably a scribe, um, 
he uh, he may be a Pharisee. We don't know for sure. It's just just that he's an expert in the law. So he stood up to test once again. Uh, they're looking for an opportunity uh, to, uh, to to see if they can prove Jesus wrong. If they can catch Jesus up in in in, uh, in in saying something that is not scriptural, that uh, uh, that that or that that is blatantly heretical, uh, based on their understanding. And as Jesus and, and I've, I've 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 pointed this out week after week after week uh, as we've as we've been going through the book of Luke, uh, Jesus has this penchant for um, answering a question with a question. You know, he very often leads the uh, the person asking the question to, uh, to to come to a conclusion or come up with an answer, and then he uh, then he validates that answer, or or, or he gets them to, to to drive deeper. And in this case, uh, it says the, uh, the 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 law uh, expert so it says, "What must I do to inherit eternal life?" Well, first of all. An inheritance isn't something that that you can earn. Okay, you get that? What must I do to inherit eternal life? You know, I've I've I mentioned uh, week after week. Uh, don't worry about the do. Worry about the who. You know, don't worry about what can I do because there's nothing in the world that any of us, not a single one of us, there's nothing that any of us can do earn eternal life there's nothing that we can do to earn salvation and so so that right away it, it precludes the entire question but yet going even deeper <coughs> the uh the 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 uh the, the i'll call him the scribe the scribe uh says, says says what must i do to inherit okay you can't do anything to inherit. An inheritance is something that you are given. That's something that you are provided, that is, that, that is given to you. It's something that you are born into. Or in the case of a Christian, you're born again into. Uh, but even more so, that maybe that, you, that you're either born into it by birth, or you are adopted into it, and as uh, as as, uh, as as Paul tells us uh, uh, in in uh, his letters to the Corinthians, uh, he he talks about adoption and that we are adopted into God's family. That we are that that, that we are adopted. When you are adopted, you have you gain the same inheritance as a naturally born. Child. So here, this guy is saying, "Well, what can I do to inherit?" In other words, um, how can I convince? Uh, who do I? Who do I? Who do I have to impress? Who do I have to? Uh, uh, who do I have to get alongside? Who do I? Who do I have to talk to to get uh, to, to to get this inheritance of of, in, of eternal life? And uh, so, uh, obviously, it's a it's kind of a kind of an off the wall question. And again, Jesus, as he as he often does, he's answering with a question. He says, "Well, and, and I'll, I'm going to kind of paraphrase this. So, um, what do you think the law says?" You know, he he asks, "What's written in the law? How do you read it? In other words, how do you understand what the law says? A, what does the law say? And B, how do you understand what it says?" Because actually Jesus is, is, is fishing here to see if, if the scribe actually does understand. And he answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. So he's, he, he, he's actually quoting uh, Deuteronomy 6, 5 and Leviticus 19, 18. Uh, where, where where this uh, was was laid out as as part of the law of Moses, and uh, Jesus says, uh, says, 
you've answered correctly. Do this and you'll live. Well, okay, so we, we, we get that. And that we, we get that, you know, loving the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. So he's, he's got, if you think about it, Deuteronomy has all the bases covered. You know, we, we, we talk about, you know, we, we, re, we tend to relate the heart to, uh, uh, to, to emotion and, and love. We tend to, uh, uh, we, we tend to, to align the soul as, as the spirit with all your strength. In other words, everything that you can, every, with everything that you can do, uh, with all of the actions that you, that you portray, and with all of your mind, in, in your understanding. And, and study, and, and, and how you look at things. So it's, it's, it's the entire package. And then it says, love your neighbor as yourself. And that's the one that gets folks folk in trouble. You know, they can study, they can, uh, they can, they can pray, they can, uh, you know, they, 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 they can believe, they can, they can do good things. When it comes to that love in their neighbors, hmm. Man, that's a tough one, isn't it? And especially, you know, loving your enemies, but, but just loving your neighbors in general. Um, you know, it, it's, it's kind of a tough one. So uh, there, there's a qualifier on loving your neighbor. The, the qualifier being love your neighbors as yourself. And this is what I was talking about earlier. When you, uh, when, when you hopefully, hopefully you, uh, now, some of us need to love our neighbors more than we love ourselves, or actually some of us need to love, love ourselves in loving God. We, we need to get right with God. We need to get right in our, within ourselves, and we need to get right with the, the, these people that would be our neighbor. So he's, at, at this point, uh, you know, Jesus has, has, has bounced it back on. And and he he answered he answered it correctly and Jesus said you know do this and you'll live. But now get this verse twenty nine I love this. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, "And who is my?" <laughs> In other words, okay, yeah, I can probably do that, but um. Define for me my neighbor. How how big does that have to get? You know, is it just you know okay? You know, the guy that lives to the left and the right and the front, and well, you know, the guy that lives behind me, he's across the alley, so he's not really my, my neighbor. Uh, or you know, the guy up the road, or um, just just how big does this neighbor thing have to be? He's he's wanting to justify himself. He's wanting he's wanting to be able to. Prove, not to prove to Jesus. He doesn't care. He, he really doesn't care about proving, proving himself to Jesus. He wants to prove himself to himself so that he can be comfortable in saying, I love my neighbor. I love my neighbor. I love my neighbor as I love myself. I am just such a great guy. But, but can't I pull in who my neighbor is? Does it, does it have to be everybody? So here's where, uh, you know, he, uh, he, he's basically chasing, still chasing after what does he have to do? What is the minimum requirement that he can get by with? <laughs> uh, he says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And, G and Jesus says, okay, you know, here's this, and there's this piece. And he says, but, but how much of that do I really have to do? You know, is, it, is it an absolute requirement? Is it a recommendation? Is it a suggestion? What, what, what is it exactly? So Jesus then responds by telling a story, telling a parable. And parables, parables always are designed to get people to look deep deeper and uh, uh this is one of my this is one of my favorites uh, i've actually preached on this a number of times and 
uh, it's a lot of a lot of you a lot of you out there listening to this you may you may know this parable it's often referred to as uh, as the, the the parable of the good samaritan uh it's used this is actually used uh or variations of it are are often used in a secular means uh to represent uh, how you know just just treat people nicely yeah. it's it gets out of it's that the the out of the biblical realm into the secular realm, and it's like, oh well, you just need to be a nice person. Like, no, you can't get to heaven that way. Uh, but we won't go there. So, starting in verse thirty, uh, going through verse thirty-five, Jesus took up the question, and get the <laughs> he took up the question. In other words, the gauntlet has been thrown. Okay, Jesus took up the question and said. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of Robert. They stripped him, beat him, and fled, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down that road. When he saw him, he passed by on the other side. In the same way, a Levite, when he arrived at the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, on his journey, came up to him. And when he saw the man, he had compassion. He went over to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on olive oil and wine. And he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him. When I come back, I'll reimburse you for whatever extra you spend. Now, this, this, this has been and can be preached half a dozen different ways, uh, and and we're, I'm not going to I'm not going to preach, or at least I'm, I'm going to try not to preach today. It, it is it is after all a Bible study, um, but again, he had wanted to know what he could do. So um, this parable uh, first. It, this is the man going from Jerusalem to Jericho. You need to understand that the road from uh, from, from Jerusalem to Jericho was was seventeen miles of road, but it went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, um, and uh, it it dropped in elevation uh, from, uh, from 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 over twenty five hundred feet above sea level to approximately eight hundred feet below sea level down at Jericho. So it's a very steep road. It's, uh, you know, obviously it's not roads like we have. Um, you know, they're not, not nice paved roads. They were footpath and, and animal cart uh, and animal roads. Uh, but along, and along the way, there, there's a lot of uh, crags and crevices where, uh, where robbers would hide and, uh, and, and, and attack uh, travelers as they were going back and forth, and a lot of times, um, you know, people would uh, would be would travel up to, J- to Jerusalem, uh, whether it was to go to uh, go to the temple, uh, maybe go to the market, uh, maybe you know buy some things, uh, and they would come back. And as they were coming back, uh, these these uh, the, these robbers would fall on them and, and, and steal everything. They'd, they'd Beat them, take everything they've got, and, and leave them for dead alongside the road. Um, and that's what happened to this to this poor guy. Uh, so along comes a priest. Now it, it doesn't say that uh, specifically which direction he was going, but it says that he was going down that road. Uh, so we can assume uh, a that uh, that the uh, the traveler was coming. He said he was going from Jerusalem to Jericho. He was probably coming back from having been uh, from having been at the uh, at the temple, and from and uh, probably possibly uh, from, from some of the the markets and bazaars. And here comes the priest going down the road, and he he sees he sees this guy, and he kind of moves to the other side and, and bypasses him. And we're not told specifically if the if the one that was uh, that, that had been beaten uh was a jew or not uh but uh, we, we we 
kind of gather that maybe he was. Uh, so then along comes a Levite. Now uh, the priests, we you know, we know, you know they're they're doing their service in the temple, and uh, and and doing uh, doing various things in the synagogues, and that the Levites Levites were uh, were actually descendants of of the tribe of Levi, and uh, they 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 assisted the priests. Uh, they they uh, uh, they provided backup. You know you kind of a loose connotation uh, to today's deacons, okay? Um, so he comes along, he sees the guy, and again, <laughs> over to the side, up our side of the road, down, you know, it's the, I don't see him, I don't see him, I don't see him, and, uh, and just went on his merry way. Uh, probably neither one of them ever, ever gave a second thought to this uh, Poor guy laying there at the side of the road, uh, uh, half dead or dying. Now there there could be a couple of reasons for that. Number one, um, uh, an easy answer to it was that um, uh, they may have been you know they may have saw what what kind of condition the guy was in, and they may have been afraid for their their own lives uh, because there was a opportunity where uh, uh, you know. Whatever, wherever the robbers were that that, that had uh, that had done this to this poor guy, uh, you know, if I go over there and I and I look, um, you know, they they may jump me, or and and we see this, we, we've heard of this, and we've seen this in the news uh, for you know, over the years. That, um, you know, he may have he may have been bait, you know, kind of like somebody hitchhiking alongside the road, and, you know, they look, you know, they you know they don't look threatening at all but uh, when you pull over and as they're uh, talking to you their friends jump up out of the bushes and and it back the car well you know, the the, uh, the priest and the levi they they may have they may have been thinking along those lines you know, we don't know. You know i'm just throwing out conjecture i'm not saying that this is scriptural it's it it's uh, uh but it it's kind of a uh, just an understanding of, of mindsets um but again they may have they they may have considered uh, that that uh, the, the, the there may be uh, the robbers may be waiting for the next victim, or they may be thinking that uh, that this guy is bait to get uh, get somebody to come over and look at him. And while they're bent over looking at him, his buddies are the robbers, and they jump up and take them up. Uh, another scenario uh, that, that that would be possible for uh, the priests and the Levites. The priests and the Levites, by by Jesus' time, uh, had become extremely arrogant. They had been they they had become extremely self centered, and they they served God. They had become extremely pious, and they were. You know, they knew everything. They did everything right. They were in charge. They were above. And according to according to Jewish law, being around, being close to, and 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 potentially handling uh, a dead body or or someone who was very near death would make them ceremonially ceremonially unclean. That meant uh, that they had to, uh, uh, they, they, you know, they, they, they were defiled um, for, for seven days. And that required them uh, to go through a, a purification ritual. So, uh, so stopping for them, um, you know, from a, a perspective of their, their piety uh, was, was dangerous. Um, it, it was inconvenient and it, and it could be costly. So next we have Samaritan. Now let's understand let's understand the relationship between Jews and Samaritans, and uh, and and we've we've talked a little bit about this uh, at least once before. Um, Samaritans uh, let, to, to share uh, to share just a little bit of a little bit of history about the Samaritans. Uh, Samaritans were, uh, shall I say? Um, uh, they, they they were descendants of Jews uh, who um, 
who intermarried with non-Jews or, or Gentiles. Okay, so they became um, uh, they, they became outcasts. Uh, you know, we 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 have uh, uh, we have doctrinal um, uh, I'll say doctrinal representation uh, in in certain. Uh, certain denominations nowadays, where if you marry outside of your uh, of the denomination, uh, you are no you you are excommunicated. You are no longer considered uh, a part of that denomination. Uh, and the only way to get back is to is to bring that other person in. And a lot of times, uh, even that even that isn't good enough. Um, you know, normally, when 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 that person, if you're if you're wanting to marry outside the denomination, you have to get that 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 partner, that intended partner of yours, to join the denomination and go through uh, whatever uh, what, whatever hoops and rituals there are to uh, uh, to become uh, to become part of the den- denomination, and and then that then it's okay for you to marry. Um, but the key is that. Uh, the Samaritans were they were descendants of Jews who uh, uh, over the last few hundred years or so had uh, had married outside of Judaism and uh, uh, they were uh, they were they were considered unclean they were considered rebellious they were considered um, idolaters they, uh, they, they they were uh, they, they, they were absolutely despised by by the by the Jews, you know. uh, and the, and the stronger the stronger the uh, faith the, the the Jewish person had, the greater their hatred for Samaritans. Well, Samaritans felt the same way. You know, it's it, it's pretty easy to um, it, it's pretty easy to, to hate somebody that hates you. Uh, so when you have when you have this, uh, uh, you 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 have the the the, the strong Jews. Uh, that, that every word out of their mouth towards Samaritans is derogatory. I mean, what we see here is, folks, racism isn't anything new. Get over racism because it's nothing new. It's n- 2,000 years ago and before there was racism. The Jewish people, this person, this person is descended of Jews, but they married a Gentile. You are now my enemy. You are now my sworn religious enemy. It's just like saying blacks and whites. It's like saying uh, it's like saying uh, uh, Hispanic and Oriental and black and white. It's, we're all we are all children of God. We are all created by God. Okay. Get over racism. It's nothing new. It's nothing surprising. It's always been there. And in this case, here's where the rubber meets the road. The Samaritan, on his journey, came up to him. When he saw the man, he had compassion. This ultra pious Jewish priest. And the ultra pious Jewish Levite looked at this person and put themselves. Oh, I made. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't want anything to do with that person um, because of you know whatever the reason was. And along comes this just average individual. This Samaritan, ew, Samaritan. So see, we have Jews ranked up here in Jewish culture, and you have the Samaritan ranked down here. And you got to remember, he's talking to a Jewish expert in the law. And he says, the Samaritan came along, went over to him, he bandaged, bandaged his wounds, Okay. He may have been. He may have had some rags or something that he, or something that he was able to bandage him with. He poured on olive oil and wine. In other words, he he was he, he cleaned the wounds. 
And then he put him on his animal. He didn't say, well, um, okay, you come along and then and mount up and, and ride away. He put, he put this, poor, this poor beaten guy up on his animal, and he walked to the inn. And he took care of him. He got him, he got him into the inn, and he cared for the, the, the Samaritan went out of his way to take care of this guy. By this time, the priest and the Levite are probably wherever they were headed to. But this guy, the Samaritan, he took, took the time, took the effort. And the next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said, take care of him. When I come back, I'll reimburse you for whatever extra you spend. Now, now two denarii. Denarii are, are it, it was a coin of the day, and it, uh, the, the, it was a day's wage for, for common labor. So this guy takes out, takes out two days' pay. Now, the, it, it, would normally, uh, uh, it, it would normally pay, uh, pay for, um, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it, it, would, it would pay for about uh, a couple of weeks of, uh, of, of uh, lodging. It doesn't necessarily take care of any extra expenses. But the Samaritan, not only, not only did he personally take care of the guy, but he, he made arrangements with the innkeeper. He says, okay, this will get him his lodging for a couple of weeks, and then if, there's, if, if you incur any other expenses, when I come back, as I come back through this way, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll pay, you whatever, pay you back whatever else you spent. I mean, he, he totally went above and beyond. For for somebody that on a good day would hate him, and on a worse day wouldn't. If uh, and we're not told, we're not told who the traveler was. Um, <coughs> it's just that, uh, that 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 he was traveling, so we don't know. We we don't know who he was. We don't know if he was Jew, we, and, and I, it, it really doesn't matter that much. But if he was a Jew, and he had been conscious because of the hatred between Jews and Samaritans, if he had been, if he was a Jew and he had been conscious, he would have tried to tell the Samaritan to get away from him. Because as we see later in the in 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 Luke. Uh, in the, the case of the uh, uh, the woman at the well, when Jesus encounters the Samaritan woman, um, you know, her response to him was, was, "How dare you, a Jew, ask anything from me?" Uh, because a Jew wouldn't ask a Samaritan for something; they wouldn't take anything from a Samaritan. From a Samaritan. But again, here uh, we have the scenario where the, Sun, the Samaritan. As, uh, is the one that, that, that goes above and beyond for someone not only that he doesn't know, not only is, uh, is he just, just some stranger, but is potentially what would normally and, and socially be an enemy. And he took care of it. So as we move forward, the last, uh, last couple of verses here, uh, so, uh, so Jesus says, which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor, the man who fell into the hands of the robber? The one who showed mercy to him, he said. Then Jesus told him, go and do the same. Now, this isn't to say that uh, that, that by some action or some activity or uh, some uh, something that that uh, that, uh, that, that this uh, uh, that, that that law person or lawyer that, that by some action that he takes that he could that he would inherit eternal life. That's not what this is saying. What it's saying is the guy identified without even realizing. He identified who 
prove to be a neighbor. Not, not whose neighbor was he, but who proved to be a neighbor. Who did the right thing? And it was the Samaritan. And you notice that this guy, he couldn't even bring, him, bring himself to say the word. He says, uh, he, he says, he says, uh, says which of these uh, proved to be the neighbor? The one who showed mercy. He, he, wouldn't even, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't go so far as to say, well, the Samaritan. No, 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 no. Eh, eh, eh. Get that out of there. Can't, I can't say the word. It was the one that showed mercy. <laughs> and Jesus tells him, go and do the same. In other words, your neighbor is everything. Your neighbor, your neighbor doesn't look like you. Your neighbor doesn't necessarily speak like you. They don't necessarily even speak the same language. They, uh, your, your, neighbor, your neighbor doesn't believe like you. Your neighbor doesn't live like you. They may not dress like you. They may not smell like you. They may not have the same color of skin or the same shape of the eyes. They are everybody. We are all God's children, and we are all, we're more than that. We're more than just each other's neighbor. We are each other's brothers and sisters. We have brothers and sisters in Christ, but at the, the larger scale, we are all each other's brothers and sisters. And we need, we need, and I'm going to get on my, my, get in my pulpit here for a second. We need as a society to quit with the racism thing. Not just being racist, but calling everything racist. We need, to, we need to step away and we need to realize that we are all each other's neighbors. There is none below being our neighbor. So what are we supposed to take away from this this week? Well, first of all, Jesus exposes our attempts to justify ourselves. You know, you saw that. He, Jesus knew. Jesus knew that this guy was. He was trying. He was trying to prove that he was that he had done enough. That it that that, that, that he was that he was okay. He was good to go. And Jesus exposed that attempt for him to justify himself. Jesus communicates with us in ways that we that we can understand. I mean, he he laid out this story. Trust me, this uh, the, the, this uh, this lawyer knew the the road um, the, the the road that uh, uh, that Jesus was talking about, and and he he, he was you know, he was from the area. He he, he knew that road. He he probably traveled that road uh, many many times. So Jesus speaks to us in ways that we can be familiar with and, and, uh, and, and reveals things to us that way. And he expects us as his followers to extend grace for all, to all. He expects us to, to go beyond the boundaries, go beyond the boundaries of denomination, Go beyond the boundaries of, uh, of of faith or lack thereof. To go beyond the boundaries of of national uh, national heritage, national origin, uh, race, creed, color. To go beyond all of that, and to to view all people as our neighbor. So here's this week's uh, memory verse for you. He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. That from, uh, from Luke 10, 27. So again, thank you for, for joining us uh, again this week. And uh, you would uh, join me in a word of prayer, and we'll close out. Heavenly Father, in your Son's name, we come to you, nothing special, no one special. The Father, just blessed to be, to be one of your children, blessed to have been made in your own, blessed to be able to, uh, to, to, 
to come together either in person or virtually to, uh, to experience your word and to learn what it is that you would have us to learn. Father, I hope that, that and pray that, uh, that something in this message this week has touched someone's heart. Be with us now until we're able to, uh, to come together again for the, the next session. For it's in your son's name we pray. Amen.